From leg breaks that'll make you grab a barf bag, to a swollen head that left one fighter looking like Megamind. These are the UFC's most gruesome injuries. When it comes to MMA, it goes without saying that injuries come with the territory. It's not like fighters expect not to get hurt. Their whole job is based around doing the most damage possible to one another. All for the entertainment of us fans. Sheesh. Sounds even worse when I put it that way. Even though fighters are aware of the risks involved, doesn't mean they're happy when they're dealt a brutal injury. In fact, some injuries could prove career-ending for a fighter, and some of the worst injuries can put them out of commission for a long time. Take for instance the unfortunate case of Corey Hill. The lightweight fighter was booked to bump heads with Dale Hart at UFC Fight Night 16 back in 2008. But if he was hoping for a win, Corey was about to be disappointed. In the second round, Hill threw a leg kick, but instead of doing damage to Hart, his leg snapped. Understandably, he fell down moaning in agony. He just snapped his tibia and fibula, the bones in his shin. And I don't have to be an MD to know that having your leg bend at that angle has gotta hurt like hell. Of course, the ref stopped the fight and doctors rushed in to tend to Hill. But the fans must have been squirming in their seats looking at that leg. I'm surprised Corey didn't faint. Now, while this next injury wasn't a fight stopper, it sure was difficult to look at. I'm talking about Mark Hominick, who fought the legendary Jose Aldo at UFC 129 back in 2011. Since they fight at featherweight, you might think that these guys don't hit too hard. But trust me, some of these smaller guys can pack a punch. Mark definitely knows that, seeing as the punches and elbows that he ate from Aldo caused swelling above his right eye that only a blind man couldn't notice. I mean, the guy looked like he needed serious medical attention. But according to the referee and Mark, he was still good to go. The fight lasted all five rounds, but Jose walked away with a win via decision. Sorry Mark, I guess you held on for nothing. But you've gotta respect his warrior spirit. I would have run out of the octagon as soon as I saw that huge lump. Speaking of fighters with a lot of heart hanging in there, Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira may have hung on a tad too long for his own good. And you're about to see why. At UFC 140 in December of 2011, Antonio was set to fight fellow heavyweight Frank Mir in a bout that would prove to be more brutal than anyone expected. In only the first round, Frank managed to get poor Tony in a Kimura submission. Rather than tap, Antonio resisted. Maybe he thought he could tough it out till the end of the round. Well, if that is what he thought, he was definitely wrong. Antonio's arm brutally snapped before he got the chance to tap. Mir won the fight, giving Antonio a broken arm for Christmas in the process. Talk about the worst gift ever. Now perhaps the most famous of all these injuries was suffered by a fighter considered by many to be the greatest mixed martial artist of all time, Anderson the Spider Silva. The horrific accident went down at UFC 168 in 2013 when Anderson faced Chris Weidman to try and win back the middleweight title which Chris had stripped him of only six months earlier. While Silva may have been hoping to reclaim that belt, he got something very different that night. In the second round, as the world-class striker threw one of his famous kicks, Chris perfectly checked it. And while it may have stopped Anderson's leg, his foot wanted to keep on going. This resulted in one of the most gruesome leg snaps we've ever seen. Anderson's foot looked like it might fold forward to meet his knee. I don't know about you, but I can't even look at this break for too long without feeling queasy. Funny enough though, Chris never intended to break Anderson's leg. Karma may have had it out for Weidman since then, because he suffered a nasty leg break of his own, more than 7 years later at UFC 261. While fighting Uriah Hall, only 17 seconds into the first round, Weidman threw the first strike of the fight, a leg kick. And just like Silva's leg eight years prior, Chris's snapped clean like a breadstick. The fight was immediately stopped, and medics rushed in to take care of the injured fighter. And to be honest, you gotta feel for the guy. Months of training and hard work, all down the drain only 17 seconds into the fight. Man, that's gotta suck. 
So far, none of the injured fighters on this list have gone on to win their fights. But the same can't be said for our next fighter, who managed to walk away with a decisive victory, despite his stomach-turning injury. It was UFC 159 in 2013, and John Jones was fighting Chael Sonnen. In one of the most highly anticipated bouts of the year, Jones was dominant for as long as the fight lasted, which wasn't very long, because he managed to beat Sonnen in the first round via TKO. After being declared the winner, UFC commentator Joe Rogan approached John for his post-fight interview. And when Joe looked down, he noticed that John's big toe was almost hanging off his foot at a nauseating angle. Understandably, John kind of freaked out. I mean, imagine your adrenaline pumping, you can't feel anything. Then you look down and see your big toes almost broken off. They sat Jones down, and while he was receiving medical treatment, he still went on to do the post-fight interview with Rogan. Yeah, I'm alright, man. Um, uh, you know, I was just so happy to get back Chelsea Sonnen. Chelsea Sonnen's an awesome opponent. Uh, we went through a lot of drama. Geez, John's one tough cookie, that's for sure. And speaking of tough cookies, you'd be crazy to think Joanna Junjacek isn't as tough as they come. After seeing the brutal injury she suffered against Zhang Weili, the two strawweights met at UFC 248 in 2020 as the co-main event. And although the fight lasted all five rounds, if I was the ref, I would have stopped the bout early for fear that Joanna was gonna drop dead. You only have to take one look at the Polish fighter during this bout to see what I mean. After suffering multiple, brutal strikes to the head and face, Joanna's head started to swell. And then it swelled some more, and then some more. I mean, by the end of the fight, Joanna looked like some kind of space alien. I doubt even her parents would have recognized her. The abnormally large swelling was caused by something called a hematoma, which is when a pool of blood accumulates in an organ, tissue, or space in the human body. Just thinking about it makes me sick. Thankfully, the hematoma that formed on Joanna's head and gave her such an altered appearance wasn't too dangerous. And when she flew back to Poland, she was able to get surgery to remove it. And now, she's back to normal. Thank God for that. I don't know about you, but if I looked like that after a fight, I'd never step in the octagon again. Well, there you have it, folks. Fighters risk all sorts of grievous bodily harm when they step into the octagon. but sometimes they end up sustaining injuries they probably never bargained for. So from legs that snapped like breadsticks, to swollen faces that could make a grown man cry, those were the UFC's most gruesome injuries.